how to obtain the method of moments for the gamma distribution function. If we recall that our gamma function it follows the distribution where the mean is alpha beta and the variance is alpha beta squared. So we are not concerned with the distribution, we are only concerned with this first. <coughs> This one means that our expected value here is equal to alpha beta and the variance of x is equal to alpha beta squared. And we know that the solution to the method of moments is when the population mean is equal to the sample mean. So, we can also recall that <coughs> mu2 for the second one is the solution to this. So, from what is given, our mu1 one is equal to the expected value, which is alpha beta, and the n11 is equal to the sample mean, which is this, which is x bar. Let's say this is our equation 1, and this is our equation 2. So equating equation 1 and equation 2, we have that mu11 is equal to m11 which implies that x bar is equal to alpha beta that is to say x bar is equal to alpha beta let's take this as our equation star <coughs> Also, for the second one, we have mu 1, 2 is equal to the expected value of x squared. We don't do it yet. We also have that our sample mean for the second one is 1 all over n summation of xi all squared. So we can't equate these two together because we don't have a value for this. What we do is to see how we can find this. We can recall that the variance of x is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x all squared. So it simply means that if we make this a subject of formula, we have the variance of x plus the expected value of x all squared. Our variance is this, which is alpha beta squared plus our expected value is the mean, which is alpha beta. Squared. It means that our expected value is equal to alpha beta squared plus alpha squared beta squared. So these are expected values. We cannot equate these two together. Let's say this is our equation 3 and this is our equation 4. If we equate, equate equation 3 and equation 4 we will have alpha beta squared plus alpha squared beta squared is equal to 1 all over n summation of x i all squared 
So that's all we have. We move over to this place. We have as alpha beta squared plus alpha squared beta squared will be equal to 1 all over n summation of xi squared. We can recall from equation star. That is this. We can recall from equation star that um, x bar is equal to alpha beta. It implies that alpha is equal to x bar beta all over beta. So here we will see alpha here. We put x bar all over beta. It means here we have x bar all over beta times beta squared plus here we have x bar because of this square we have square here and beta squared times beta squared to be equal to 1 all over n summation x i squared. So this can cancel this, while this will cancel this. We will now be left with x bar plus x, x, sorry, x bar beta, this and this, and x bar squared to be equal to 1 all over n summation of x i squared. <coughs> So this can go back to this place to give us x bar beta to be 1 all over n summation of x i squared minus x bar squared, which is the same thing as this 1 all over n summation of x i minus x bar. All squared. It means our beta estimate will be 1 all over n summation of all over x bar. So this is our beta estimate. To obtain alpha, to obtain alpha, How do we obtain alpha? We need to recall, recall from equation star. That is why I left it. That x bar is equal to alpha beta, which implies that this time we we'll use beta. Beta will be equal to x bar all over. Alpha. <coughs> so anyway, we see beta. That means our beta estimates will be x bar over alpha. So it's quite simple. What we do, we substitute this x bar over alpha into this to give us x bar all over alpha to be equal to. To be equal to 1 all over n summation of x i all over x bar all squared all over x bar. So if we cross multiply, we have 1 all over alpha estimate to be 1 all over n summation of x i all over x bar all squared 
this multiplied by this will have x bar squared. So once we write this as our estimates, it will now be x bar squared all the way. 1 all over n summation of xi all over x bar all squared. So this is how we can obtain the method of moment for the gamma distribution. These are ranges from 1 to n, i ranges from 1 to n, i ranges from 1 to n. So this is how we can obtain the method of moment for the gamma distribution function. This is our beta estimate and this is our alpha estimate.